Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be uh, live in person again. This is my first time after a year and a half speaking. Uh, biggest, uh, biggest thing I had to decide before I got up here was whether my suit was still going to fit. So that was the, uh, yeah, the question after a year and a half of being at home, but uh, we're okay, so uh, check mark. Um, I'm really excited about this talk because it's a little bit, this is not an ad for Hired Score, my company, uh, but it's a chance to talk to you about recruiters and, and I think some of the really interesting challenges to think about because they're a huge part of your workforce and they're also a huge part of how you get your workforce. Um, so we're gonna talk about, has, just out of curiosity, has anybody in here ever been a recruiter or done recruiting? All right, look at that. So you know this is a really hard job. I have a huge amount of respect. It is like air traffic control for people. You've got hiring managers that need things. You've got candidates that need things. You've got jobs coming, closing, opening. It is really hard. And when I show you some of the data here in a second, I think you're really going to understand some perspective on where we are. I want to talk a little bit about, uh, not myself, but uh, why we're in a unique position to talk about recruiters. So, my company, Hired Score, we support about 30% of the Fortune 100, nearly 20% of the Fortune 500 uh, using AI for hiring. So we look at lots and lots of data. These are some of the companies we work with, not an ad for us, but more to give you perspective on why I'm in a position to talk about this. Um, and everybody's company's challenges are a bit different, but what's really interesting is we've studied over 190 million decision points. So that means we've looked at hiring across all these organizations. We've seen all the permutations from everything, people that get selected, people that get rejected, and so forth. So we see it all. And what we are seeing is a really major inflection point right now. And actually, the, the talk that you just heard has a lot to do with exactly why there's multiple challenges and how this all ties into recruiters. So on one hand, you see the trends and challenges. So you've got the backlog of, of pandemic and market shifts. You've got recruiters at capacity. We'll talk about some of the the data we have on burnout. We've got uh, increased focus on compliance. The regulatory environment is constantly changing. There's new laws coming out around how people have to treat people, what they have to disclose and so forth. So that you've got to worry about. And then attracting candidates and employer brand and all the other things are hard. Now, that's the vertical challenges. Multiply that by the fact that we also have to hit what we just talked about, DE&I goals. We also have to care about candidate experience. So here's a classic example. What is the trade-off that you ask a recruiter to make in an example where they have to choose between the diversity and slate of the rec or they have to meet the hiring manager's demands to fill the job? How do they balance that? How do you give them the autonomy to make that decision? It's really, really hard. And by the way, when I show you the data, they've got a lot of these decisions to make constantly every single day. So this gets really complicated. And then you've got other outcomes that they're being balanced against like candidate experience, mobility, retention, They've got to prioritize internals over externals. They've got to prioritize referrals over this thing because of other initiatives going on at the same time. This stuff's really hard, and they've got to all do it in a timely manner and make candidates happy along the way. So uh, it's a pretty interesting thing. So now, that would all be hard, except that you put that against what's happening in the market, and you have two really interesting things happening. This is from the US Bureau of Labor. But you see, some of you have probably seen these chat charts, you have a tightening labor market, right? So job openings are higher. And then you have the great resignation, which we've all seen the data around. So those things are happening, but check this one out. Uh, you can do the search for yourself. So this is uh, as of, I think, Thursday, but I ran it today and it was pretty similar. This is 16,000 recruiter openings that were posted on LinkedIn in the last 24 hours. It's crazy. <laughs> So what that tells you is the demand for recruiting, he referenced it a little bit, is at an all-time high, and recruiters are subject to leaving too, and we'll show you some of the reasons they can leave. And so what is the burden we have to think about when it comes to our recruiters? It, it really becomes uh, front and center, because again, without those folks, we're not hiring the people we need to fuel all the, the growth and achieve all the initiatives we just talked about. So here's a, this is research. I, uh, by the way, we have a little table outside. There's copies of this research. I, I, I don't have enough for everybody, but if you want to grab one, if not, just email me, Jason at Hire Score, grab me on LinkedIn, I'll get you a copy of the research. It's done by a group called Aptitude, uh, a, a woman uh, analyst who's amazing, uh, Matt, uh, Maddie Lurano ran this, uh, and Hire Score sponsored it. But what we saw was the following. 58% of recruiters do not believe that leadership understands their role in the organization. So there's a disconnect between what recruiters think they're doing and what everyone else thinks they're doing. 
one in three are looking for new jobs. And we see that there's gonna be lots of jobs for them to choose from, as indicated by the data I just shared with you on LinkedIn. So that means the people you need to fuel the very hard labor market are also themselves in the labor market, and that creates a, uh, a very <laughs> interesting dynamic. Uh, one in two recruiters would join another organization if it had better recruitment technology. So this is where we start to get into some of the interesting dichotomy about what things actually help recruiters. And some of it's a little, um, from my experience, it, 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 it's not what you'd expect in a way. And so I'll, I'll share with you what I mean here. 30% feeling more burned out than last year. I, I think that's kind of everyone, but they're humans too, so we will throw them in here. And 42% of recruiters do not have the resources they need to be successful. We'll talk about what they've, they've highlighted. Anything that jump out? Is this surprising to anybody or sounds, sounds about right? Okay, so validated through this research. Okay, so how bad is it? Well, we see all that data from these big companies, right? So we look at the data and we say, what do we know about recruiter volumes? And this is a chart on the left that's showing you the average number of recs that the a recruiter's managing. You see a huge drop off during the, you know, the, the, the peak of the pandemic when hiring kind of stopped and you'll see it shoot back up. And what you can see is that um, it's, it's a percentage of people supporting more than 35 recs. And we've got, you know, at least in some cases, 50, 30, 40% of recruiters managing more than 30 requisitions at one given time. So that's, you know, potentially 30 hiring managers. You gotta imagine on some of these recs, they have 100, 200, 300 candidates on some of these recs all at the same time. We have one company that's a client that has recruiters with over 100 recs on their desk. It's not even pot, like you can't do that. No human can do that, but they don't have an alternative because the capacity problem is real. The other fascinating is, is on the right side, you're seeing accumulated work through October as represented by RECs. This is just our data, so we're not seeing the entire world, but we can see that it nearly doubled from 2020 to 2021 in terms of the work that's being handled. So you either need more people to deal with that, uh, you need to offset that, and there are, by the way, solutions uh, to that. There's great organizations, one of my friends is here from, Brand status and RPO, so there are great outsourcing opportunities you can do. But another obvious opportunity is technology, which is why I'm here talking to you, is how, how do we help these people through technology? The second thing I wanted to, to tell you that I hear from a lot of our companies is, okay, this makes sense, I get it, but I can't deal with the technology change because I've got to focus on the people problem, and I'll wait to fix that thing after I get through the people problem. The challenge is, if you wait, the problem gets worse. Right? Why? Because recruiters are going to get less burned out or more burned out? More burned out. They're going to leave your company in droves, and that's going to leave you with gaps and challenges. And so if you wait to fix this, the cost of waiting here in this case could be way too great. And even though that means another project that somebody has to take on or so forth, there are solutions you can look at that have a quicker what I call time to value, which means the opportunity to impact and help people can look like this. So yes, it's not great but you can get returns and you don't have to wait for two years to get those returns. We have some customers that are going through things like, well, we'll change our ATS uh, to get recruiters help. That's not gonna be a great example of getting them help. Usually, just to let you know, uh, I don't have data on this, but anecdotally, most ATS changes will result in recruiter productivity drops because they're learning whole new systems, they've got to change and things like that. So sometimes changing out the whole entire system is not gonna be the answer, but there are point solutions uh, not just my company, other, other solutions that you can look at that get quicker wins faster. So it is possible. So just rest assured if you want to take these back to your organizations and say, we need to help our recruiters, we can get them help quick enough. So what do they want? They want tech, um, they need help. And the interesting thing is when I started at this company five years ago in AI, there was this notion of like recruiters being afraid of AI because uh, it's gonna replace them or something like that, that is not a thing. We don't see that in any of the data reporting. Anecdotally, our users, they embrace and love technology, just like we love technology in our, our own lives. We don't question using a map to get everywhere every day. We use it, right? Like we turn on, we get in our car, and we put on our navigation, and we follow it blindly wherever it takes us. So that's you know, a great example of how automation can help our recruiters do their jobs. It's not about replacing them. It's about augmenting. They want more time. Um, I think this is a luxury. I mean, they love more time to candidates. A lot of them tell us they feel like order takers, which means that they're shifting around people, candidates, processes, and they're not getting time to actually spend time recruiting people. Uh, some of those strategic initiatives go to the wayside. 
because they don't have time to do it. How, do I, how am I supposed to focus on getting a diverse slate if I need to fill the jobs, right? Something's got to give. And simplicity. Simplicity is interesting because it doesn't, uh, one of the uh, interesting survey points was they didn't say they wanted less technology, they just wanted it to work better. So what that means is that the number of tools wasn't actually a, a factor. We, we'd heard some early indicators about maybe too many tools is bad, but they don't mind having many tools as long as they work and they work together. So simplicity for us is defined as working and working together. Um, so how do you provide this to them? What is it that they say they want? So they ask for better tools to automate processes. So most of this is really honestly, it's about same things anybody wants. Take the low value stuff off my plate, automate it, find an easier way to do it, and let me do the work that's the highest value for me. So 51% were saying this is critical. F more time to engage candidates. So again, you see this theme, they want to be in front of the candidates, that's their job. They're supposed to tell people why the company is great, recruit them, that's what the job is about, uh, but they don't get a lot of time to do that. Simple technology we talked about, less time doing admin work, this is about the paper pusher problem. So again, if they're being asked to do things, I mean, we see recruiters being asked to do scheduling, sourcing, they're asked to ask, be asking to do, uh, uh, so what I mean by sourcing is going out and finding candidates. So they've got to manage their rec load, they've got to go out and find candidates, and they've got to do the scheduling, then they've got to do the offer, and sometimes they've got to do the onboarding stuff too. So you spread that all across 35 recs times you know, hundreds of people, and you get the idea this is, this is a major issue. Um, the last one's really interesting, data to drive decisions. What we found is that they actually, it's not that they want more data, they want data they can act on. So there's lots of data. If you work at a big company, so there's no shortage of reports you can get your hands on, but they want an insight that they can do something about. Tell me that these 50 people haven't been talked to in the last 20 days and show me who those people are, I'll act on that. But telling me that we have 70% of the people who are untouched, what do I do about it? Because I still got to go find out who those people are. So these are the types of things we can bring to them uh, and help them with. So I wanted to share some stories. And again, this happens to be about clients at Hired Score and how they leverage technology to help their recruiters. But again, I want to reference, this is not an ad. There are other companies that do this stuff. So these are just some of the wins that companies can get uh, when, when done right. And I'm happy to take any questions as we go throughout as well. So this is a, a, an example of what we call sourcing automation. So what sourcing automation is, is it's saying, in this case, there's somebody that applied to a company. They weren't hired for job A, okay? But they could be hired for job B, C, or D. Now, recruiters don't have the time to go back and look through every person that's sitting in the database. We all remember the age-old HR promise. We didn't thank you for this job, or we, did, we didn't hire you for this job, but don't worry, we'll hang on to your resume. If something comes up later, we'll get in touch. It's great concept, but the delivery on that concept at scale does not happen. So this is an example of that. So what the AI is doing in this case is it's automatically going back through all prior applicants and resurfacing anybody who's a direct match for the job. So we call that fetch at hired score, but there's other technologies that do that. But here's the impact, right? And here's the win for the recruiter and everybody else. So normally, to get a job, a slate of candidates will take, in this example, this is an actuarial job. Does anybody ever, you know, uh, these are jobs that can take like 70, 100 days to fill. So uh, this one was normally 10 days to find a viable candidate. The ideal candidate was found within an hour of the job being posted because it was already in their database. Now, what you see is time to present to the hiring manager was same day. So if anybody in here has been a hiring manager, imagine the same day you opened a rec, you had a slate of people in front of you with which to gauge and say these are good people or not. Okay, so that's saving the hiring manager time. The, the recruiter looks like a superhero. And then the rest of the process is often quicker, so in this case, quite a bit quicker, because these people already have one major thing in common, which is they wanted to work at your company. So you didn't have to passively find them on LinkedIn or some other database and get them to apply or do branding work or source them. They already wanted to work here. All you're doing is delivering on that HR promise that we just talked about. So what I've done is two really important things. I've saved the recruiter a ton of work because sourcing is not a great use of their time all the time. I've leveraged something that's already in my database. I already paid for it. And I've used automation to bring something back to the top of the list that gives a better candidate experience. So this is what we call a win-win-win. And this is automatic. Nobody even had to press a button to get this to happen. That's really high value, easy win for your organizations in something like this. 
Anybody would like automatic people brought to them, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. Okay. Um, and we pay, by the way, companies, we have customers that pay millions of dollars a year in recruitment marketing to get people and attract them in the first place. All this employment branding, all this work and this research and everything we do, all the campaigns they run. And the crazy thing about hiring is we say yes to one and we say no to 99. Not all 99 are bad, right? So this is high value. Here's an example of what we call um, screening automation. So what screening automation is doing is automatically ranking candidates who apply to a job in order of prioritization based on qualification. So what this is is a little bit different. It's not finding past applicants, it's taking the active people. I wanna work here, I've applied to this job and it's saying who is the best fit. In a typical rec, this is crazy, 76% of the people who apply for a requisition in, in corporate America are unqualified for the job for which they raise their hand. Which means the average recruiter is gonna spend 70 plus percent of their time looking at people who are a waste of their time in theory. So it's called the, the pile problem, if you will, right? It's classic. And so how do you save that time? It doesn't mean we, we don't get to those people, it just means if we get to them, we get to them in the right order. And so it, it sorts the inbox in a sense. Um, so 50% reduction in time to screen, 21% reduction in time to source, and uh, overall, and this is a hiring manager win, 27% reduction in time to present. So now you have happier hiring managers who are getting candidates and slates quicker than they used to. And so this is F500 company, and these are results, by the way, within six months of launching a solution like this one. So these are wins that can come back to the organization, be immediately felt, and you don't have to wait a year and a half before you can get these kinds of gains. Recruiters are happier, and we're not losing them out the door to the great recruiter resignation that's going on. Uh, this is another example. So you have a uh, Fortune 100 Pharma and Biotech company. We're really proud to work with two out of three companies that uh, drove the, uh, the vaccine uh, programs uh, during COVID, um, and a large number of those hires were run through our system. So something we, we have a lot of pride in, that we, uh, we help support that initiative. Uh, this is an example coming from that. But this is a customer had extremely high applicant. We're talking about over a million candidates a year that they had to process. So how do you get through those? And then the sourcing challenge. We estimate right now, and this is a growing number, it's about 1.8 million in saved time from recruiters spending time sourcing that was freed up to do other things. So this is just taking the FTE cost of a recruiter, allocating the time and portion that was spent towards sourcing, and reallocating that time to other activities that they don't have to do that. We're even at a point now where we can even automate the outreach to the candidate who is just rediscovered. So we don't even have to have the recruiter do that work if we don't want to, they can, that can be automatic. 54% reduction in applicant response time and 88% reduction in resume pile. So we're getting back to people quicker and we're not, we're not dealing with the pile. And the, the beauty is don't forget all the other people we said no to can be redistributed back into other jobs that are a better match for them. So we're getting wins on the, the, the one stream and then on the second bite at the apple we continue to be able to get uh, other use cases that help our, our recruiters. So your outcomes are focused on the applicants who are most likely to be hired, you improve the candidate experience and you maximize the investment they've already made in the systems they have. So the beauty of this, if you do this well, you don't even have to change your systems. You're just taking the data inside your systems and putting this back to work for your, uh, for your companies. How am I doing? Great. So Fortune 50 case study, and this is probably the last one I'll share with you all. Um, this is an example of how you can actually blend in some of those harder topics like diversity while achieving productivity. So this is the magic because if I can do both at the same time using automation, now we're, our recruiters are gonna be really happy because they're winning on both sides. They're, they're hitting their goals and they're increasing diversity. So this is a F50 company. Um, this is actually a local firm. Uh, so a company we're really proud to support uh, here in the Houston area. 300 quality candidates that were automatically sourced and applied within really their first couple of months of, of being live here. The amazing part was that they had a 66% interview rate. So the conversion rate of these people to interview was 66%. So you're wasting all this time and unnecessary energy that goes into even getting people and convincing them to come in because remember, they already wanted to work there. So this is huge. And this is the one we're, we're probably most proud of and, and you heard from a great session just a few minutes ago, around 28% increase in diverse candidates passing hiring manager review. So you're winning on both angles. You're winning in productivity and you're winning in diversity. So some food to food thought in, in terms of uh, some data I shared with you today. Recruiters are huge 
uh, please do not undervalue them. They drive a lot of the, the hiring in your organization and certainly uh, encourage you to think of how automation could maybe play a role in that and don't wait too long to leverage it because the problem could get worse. So thank you.